Welcome to reaction to episode 6 of Kino no Tabi, The Beautiful World. Um, last episode, I wasn't a big fan. It was another one of those where I just didn't get it. Um, if there was something to get, I didn't get what the point of it was. Clearly, a lot of the stories in this show seem to really depend on you not thinking about it even the tiniest bit. Um, I've already talked extensively last episode about my problem with the two story, but um, yeah, it's basically that yeah, uh, the second you ask any question, it doesn't make any sense. The three walkers fixing the tracks, uh, why in 50 years they would never even go back once to report to see their family uh, because no one is coming to see them to tell them anything. Um, and then the country where everyone got executed. Uh, obviously that would stop at some point, it wouldn't go until there's only one person left. It's the kind of thing that clearly it seems like they would, there's a message behind it and that's why it's uh, asking you to not look into how retarded it is. Uh, but I just didn't get what the message was about the story, so yeah. So far the show has been a bit mixed like that. Uh, Kino's flashback for example was amazing. All the people being crazy and all that was easily justifiable because they got lobotom lobotomized. And then there's episode like that where the people clearly aren't uh, being uh, controlled and all that, but at the same time they act like they are. And I don't know, it doesn't sit as well with me as uh, what the, the show did in the, episode, uh, in the episode of the flashback. But anyway, let's keep on the journey. Episode 6, let's get into this in 3, 2, what? Oh. That's a fucking design. Seems sketchy already. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Not uh, an unusual oh. settings. I've seen this before. Yeah. We know that. At least we know she can kill. But maybe she also has a martial skill and cannot be burned. Time for the reveal. Showing off. <laughs> Good. 
Curzion, always. Every fucking RPG. Every anime. Well, maybe not every anime, but in this sense that there is a tournament arc. So every anime almost. Looking at the show so far, I mean, it's definitely not going to be the classic story. She, she's definitely not going to help anything, I imagine. Is it so fucking bright? We're not seeing it. So we actually get to see this uh, this place. Oh, it's only the okay. of unique looking people. Main character looking guy. You can add a rule but not undo one. So what would be the rule the rule to 
break the system of this. I can't believe we're actually doing a fighting tournament. Okay. Yeah, this guy could be a main character. Absolutely. Why would the soldier live there? Wouldn't you want the soldier to live a class to be loyal? This guy might die. <laughs> This guy looks a bit like uh, Say, the main character. I think it's Say. No, it's A, main character of Dark and Black. All this build up feel like the classic, giving many reason for Kino to actually do something, but by all means, she shouldn't. If we take uh, some of the previous episode as uh, example. Just in care design, it definitely stands out.
Okay. I would say just shoot him in the face. But she might try not to kill him. There's some uh, Dragon Ball shoulder pad. The animation isn't terrible. There's actually a fair amount of movement, but I don't think it looks very cool. Very good. That wasn't terrible, by all means, but this sort just doesn't look good enough for me to enjoy this fight. I don't know. I don't think the attack or choreography was that interesting either. Small complaint, but... Uh, okay, already. But it's fine, I'm still enjoying this. I like that at least she's not uh, wreck wrecking them right away. They have a bit. Uh, they can hang on for a bit. Okay. Damn. Now that's a cool visual. With how silly this short action seemed to be. Okay, nope. I was expecting her to shoot uh, in the hole where the flame was coming out. Classic, of course, the people want blood. That's what you see at the Colosseum. And the winner decide whether you live or die, so shut up. Hmm, that's the second time this happens. I'll talk about it later.
of course. Yes, Gary. So dogs can talk too. That's overkill. She looks like a Fujikomine from a Lupin the Third, the original. It's obvious where this is going. Is it that story that we heard earlier? Is it maybe implying that Kino is there for that reason? No, I don't think so. And okay, this gets into a two-parter, makes sense. Yeah, uh, the first time some uh, Kino said, uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a boy and Kino, I don't remember the exact word, but I thought, you know, nah, this show is 20 years old, there's no way it's about gender shit from today. But then it happened later, and this time someone called Kino a girl, and uh, yeah, I have to process it sometimes. I have a hard time choosing the right word, uh, and she, uh, is Kino said the same thing. <laughs> it's hard. Kino said the same thing. Uh, I'm not that. I'm Kino. So I would definitely. I mean, you can read it like that if you want, and I'm sure other people would, but. I would probably say that it's not that, it's more probably the idea of the traveler, of human being, maybe just something like it's not a, I am a person, I'm not a, a gender. I wonder if it's that, or if it's actually just straight up shit uh, wants to be genderless, and but I don't even think that was a thing 20 years ago. Uh, I don't think there was word for it or movement for it. So I'm more gonna assume it's something like, yeah, just, I'm a person, not, uh, I'm not defined by, like, pronoun and shit like that. I am Kino. I think that's the idea. At least that's how I say it, based on how old this is. Um, let's check, maybe, the author. I haven't checked, but maybe... There's something in their bio about something like that, so maybe I can get that out of it. Uh, it's a guy. Six, six hour Keiichi. Well, I say it's a guy. It looks like a guy. And there's nothing in the bio. I would like to Google it, but I don't want to be spoiled anything. If I remember after I finish the show to Google that. Anyway, um, yeah, quite surprised, tournament arc, uh, I mean, what can I say, another one, 
um, every piece of media, well, not every, but every action piece of media seemed to have a tournament arc or a coliseum or something like that. Uh, it's entertaining, but so overdone. I can think like in the last couple of months of, I've probably consumed like 10 different stuff that have, that, that have had a, a tournament arc. I played a game called uh, Rise Son of Rome, that was the Colosseum. I played uh, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, there was an arena type. Yeah, uh, anyway. Now we know that dogs can talk to, some at least. We know, um, I was going to say we know, we don't really know, but this, um, the guy with the dog, Rick, uh, no, was it Riku? I don't remember, but it seemed to be more than just some guy. Um, I would say maybe the husband of that, that girl, that woman, but probably not, he looks young. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna watch the next one right now, so I'm not gonna speculate much. It's not that interesting. Um, I, w I really wonder actually where this is going. Is it going to be Kino wins and we get to see the, the city? Or what doesn't seem likely, but do Kino actually try to dismantle this uh, system by making a rule when she wins, uh, when Kino wins? Fuck, I don't know. I'm gonna say she. I, we don't know, so I'm not gonna say they or anything like that. I'm gonna say she. It's just an interpretation that that might be. It's, yeah, I'm gonna say she. It's much easier. Um, and it's a fictional character, so yeah. Um, yeah, she might make a rule to try to fuck this uh, system. We'll see. I mean, obviously, uh, she's winning, so yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.